It is uh, <laughs> about 2 o'clock here in the morning, about 2.30 a.m. in bed and cannot rest my mind and the Lord speaks to my heart to go to go seek Him. I have a few things that I want to say from the Lord. There's a prophecy that I want to share. There's a couple things I want to talk about. I'm going to try here in a minute and I'll splice it into this little video. I'm going to, there's a picture that was taken the other night. I was driving home and the Spirit of the Lord quickened me to the sky. The night before, the Lord Holy Spirit quickened me to look at the, to, to the sky at that night. The moon and in the way that the, the, the eeriness of these clouds, which reminded me of the movie Ten Commandments, of the death angel that came in the land of Egypt. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. The death angel being released in the land, as we've talked about on this channel, the judgment angels that are not going to be stopped by the hand of God. So, the other night I'm driving home, I feel drawn to take a picture of the sky, and I'm going to, like I said, I, I'm going to try to put it up on the big screen and see if I can, I don't know, I'm going to figure out, this is the first time I'm ever trying to do this, and I can show you guys the imagery that I saw in this sky, in this, the sky later that night as I begin to relax my mind and look at the picture and what I saw connected to the very prophecy that the Lord gave me it's on my channel of the plague coming connected to a rodent okay now but before I do there's a prophecy of judgment for the country of the Philippines from the Lord it began to come on my heart tonight I saw destruction I saw I saw fire judgment just falling upon that country now, everything that, I, that this ministry is about, when the Lord begins to deal with me, I come down here, and every time I go through this, you know, I have a sense of humor, so I, I, I'm, I'm a unique personality, so I'm kind of like, I'm like talking to God, I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, you, 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 here we are, you're dealing with me, and, and, and then I'm just like, but Lord, you know, you know how I am, a true... I see these prophets, so-called prophets in the land, and prophetess that have their chant. I see, I seen something tonight. I don't see them. They don't bring the word. A true messenger always goes back to the word. I don't care if I feel something stirring me. I come down and I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to speak it. I got to see it in your word first. Just like the tent tent meeting that I had in 2021 of the skin plague prophecy and then obviously monkeypox showed up but that's not even the, the fulfillment in its fullness of what's to come and I've told that to people but God is what he has been doing is these judgments have been falling upon the land but not in their fullness yet the tribulation is going to be a time like you've never seen folks it's like God is so merciful that he's he's doing this to give people like one final God's final call, right? So when the day of judgment happens, they'll say, "Well, it just took me. Why was he? There was no warning signs." And God said, "Yeah, there was. COVID came along. Ma massive pandemic across the whole world. This happened. The, you've seen the weather be distracted, being ripped upside down. California is getting beat up right now. I mean, just blasted by this." rainstorms and what it's doing to their to their to their state folks or stuff it's all it's been going on the last couple of years non-stop so there's no excuses but that still is isn't the fullness of the judgments of god that'll fall in the tribulation period think about that now there's a prophecy for the country of the philippines your island is going to go under the ocean those islands the, those islands and i'm going to show you by the word as God has started speaking to my heart tonight, stirring my heart, and then I'm, my mind's thinking, I'm, the Holy Spirit has, has this, has this, as as God as I as God speaks, and and I and I watch sometimes some of these people the way they say God speaks to them. I'm like, that ain't God speaking to you. 
I know how the Lord speaks. It's very direct. There's not, there's not like we're, me and him are having this long conversation like I have on the phone with somebody. It's direct. It's, direct, it's a direct word. And, and, there's a, and there's an anointing and there's a presence of God, that obviously because it's coming from God. And then it goes right back to Scripture. And I am recording. So when I see these people, the way they, they say how God speaks to them, and one who knows to hear the voice of God, I see it's, it's, the land is saturated. That's why I preach the message showdown. God always has one, one true voice. It's always been, it's his nature. You know, that's there to, to test and try all the other voices and keep and, and show you, yeah, that one's speaking the truth, but that one's not. To, to point it back to the Word. So I come down here and I, and I begin to like, Lord, okay, you're dealing with me. I need to see it in the Word. And then he reminded me, well, the skin plague, the, uh, the, the rodent prophecy, you've already preached it. The, 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 with, you've already preached from Scripture of the rodents and the emirates and things. I've already preached, I've already explained that right there from the word of what he showed me first as in, the, in, the, in the sky that day. And I talk about that on my channel, okay? So, the Philippines, the country of the Philippines, and I'm going to title this, this, this message, A Prophecy for the Phil Philippines, and then an, and, and an update, or the, the prophecy of the, of the rodent plague. I'll, I'll figure the wording out here a little, a little bit later. I'm going to do this and go back to go to bed and probably edit it tomorrow. But here's the scriptures, okay? And I want you to understand this, Philippines. There's a lot of Philippine people who follow this ministry who kind of come in and out, you know. And God is judging God's Philippines. Your country is controlled by Rome. She's controlled by the Vatican. She's controlled by the, the Antichrist system. She's controlled by Satan. As an image that was seen one time on a lady who used to follow this ministry who lied to the Holy Ghost t multiple times, it is under severe judgment now by the hand of God. But she one day when she was trying to get to God through a deception, showed a picture in the sky. And it was, you see the face of Satan in the sky. That country is controlled by the devil, religion. And then all you got, and your country is full of, har, of, of, of harlots, churches. It's a, your country is saturated with spiritual whoredom. Spiritual idolatry, adultery against the true word of God. It's saturated. That's why the women and, and the way your governments and the way your society is and all the issues and problems that go on within your country and, and, and the way your men act. The, the, the men there are just alcohol. They'll go to, I see things where men will go to church on Sunday to their Catholic mass and they'll be partying all week long, drinking and partying and disco and then having, you know, and so forth. Okay. It's a country that is going to be in the bottom of the ocean. That is thus saith the Lord. You mark it down with a pen. You'll remember this someday. And I believe in my heart, the bride will be gone. But that day's coming and it's coming very soon, folks. Now, we'll give the word. But before I read this, to understand Revelation 17, Mystery Babylon, the great, Mystery Babylon the great. Now, Mystery Babylon goes back to Catholicism, but she's got, she has her hands over, over all, many of the nations, as she does in my country, the United States of America, who's a country that has a nuclear bomb with its, our name written all over it. And I believe it'll come from the north, from the hands of Russia. This country, my country, is under God's judgment. We as Christians know that. The Holy Spirit verifies it and confirms it. Amen. She's, she's connected to Mystery Babylon because she's controlled by her. The United States heals the wound of her, which helps give her her complete a power throughout all the land to push 
change laws and times, we know as Daniel says, the book of Daniel. So in Revelation 17, she's, she's the mother of harlots. But there's a great judgment coming for her, as God's word says. Now, I never saw this till tonight, till this morning, whatever you want to call it, 2 in the morning, 2.30, night, morning, whatever you want to call it. Why was God speaking to me earlier that there's judgment going to, is, is going to be falling upon the Philippines? And I'm thinking first, like, well, because of a situation that recently I have gone through, and a person who's lied multiple times to the Holy Ghost, and, and so forth. But God says, no, this runs much deeper. See, Paul, you've been learning over this past year as your ministry has had an effect there. I have been, God has allowed me to help very few. Sister Janice, probably the only one so far who's truly Sister Nides. Those are, and I'm still trying to help Nides and work with her because she is connected to a harlot system church. And I've tried to minister to her before to get her to see the truth. And at the end of the day, if I can save one, and I remember there was a man on this, on this follow my channel for a while, who, was, who lived in the United States, who said he felt like he needed to leave this country because it's under judgment, and he goes to the Philippines. You can't run. It's, folks, there's no, country, there's no safe place but in Jesus Christ. This ministry is preaching to you to receive the Holy Ghost. So the question is this. Many people think they, they're saved. I got people in my family. I got people, I got neighbors, people around me. People, people, the, the, the world, the, the masses of people go to church. I confess Christ. The Bible says you confess your mouth to believe your heart un, that, that, that thou shall be saved. Shall. So I say, you know, I shall go to the store tomorrow. I shall go to work tomorrow. I shall go to the gym tomorrow. That's prophet, prophetically pr going forth. The, the salvation, it's speaking forth. That's the first step is when you confess Christ, you ask him to be your savior. We're all sinners, folks. There ain't nobody on this earth that's sinner, that, that, that is perfect. We're all sinners saved by grace. That's the fact. That's why Jesus died. But his, his spirit, he's eternal. He was God. He became flesh. He became a man. He, was, he, was in, he, he embodied himself full, in the fullness of his, himself in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. With what was, his, what was his desire to shed his blood, to, to redeem us back, to redeem the earth, as he said that he could send his spirit, his spirit which is eternal life into the life of the believer. So many people think, oh, I, ask, I pray the prayer of salvation and I have the Holy Spirit. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're on the first step. You're just getting started. You're not saved until the life of Jesus Christ is birthed in your soul. And when you have the Holy Ghost, you, there is not a day goes by since the day I got the Holy Ghost. And I'm, this is a fact, folks, that, got, that my heart just is not thinking about Jesus Christ. Well, I'm not, my, either I'm listening to, to worship music or at some point in the day, and, there's, and obviously there's been days I didn't, get, I didn't get, get in the Word of God, but it's like it's constantly just, I can't, I'm just, I'm pulled since that time, 18, almost 30 years now, I'm always just pulled to the word. I got my Holy Ghost is getting weak. I need the word of God because it, the Holy Ghost, the wise virgin feeds upon the word. That's what she's birthed by is the word. And it keeps her lamp trimmed and full to, to, help, to help her walk through this the very dark, deceptive time. So Philippines, your islands, they're going to be in the bottom of the ocean. That is, thus saith the Lord. You are a country that is, that is, that is under God's judgment because of what, what controls your country. Revelation 16. There were voices. This is the seventh angel, the seventh vial of God's judgments. The seventh one, the seventh vial of God's judgments. And it hits all across the different countries. When I saw this, and God speaking to me earlier, telling me about the Philippines, that God, that country's, there's a fire of judgment that's coming down that country. 
And then I'm like, okay, I'm being stirred. Then I keep trying to distract myself in the spirit of God. I cannot get my mind to rest. I'm laying on my bed like this, Lord. What is it? Go seek me. Go seek me, son. Here I am. I'm seeking him. And he leads me right to the word. Because a true prophet always comes back to the word. That's it. Points it to the word of God, period. Then his message is always done. He drops the message. He's done his job. Philippines, you're getting, you're getting, you're getting thus saith the Lord from the hand of God to your island, your islands, that your connective islands, amen. There'll be a great judgment of God that'll belch underneath your islands, either connected to earthquakes, to tsunamis, and so forth, that will take those islands under the ocean. That is thus saith the Lord, amen, as saith the word, amen. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, into the airwaves affecting the air, the weather, all these things. And we see, again, God in his, in his great mercy, already letting, it's all, I've always said this before, it's like, let's say this is the vials of God, right? And he's starting to pour out a vial, right? And he said, okay, this is the vial of the skin plague prophecy that, that I had Paul, that I had my servant, my prophet prophesy about. And I'm going to start to pour that thing out. It's going to start trinkling out. And it's going to hit the land, and it's going be, to be given a title called monkeypox but it hasn't been poured out yet in its fullness. Yeah. God is allowing these little things that, like, that trinkle down in, in, in this time that we're in to, to, to wake people up, to run to your only place of safety. That's in Christ. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And many people think, well, I got baptized and still smoking cigarettes. You ain't got the Holy Ghost yet. God has, God's got to sanctify that out of your life or you're still turning to, to chewing tobacco or alcohol or other addictions and things like that to, to help you deal with what's going on in your spirit. You're feeding on a demon, a demon spirit. You're on the road, but you ain't saved yet until you got the Holy Ghost that burns that out of you. Catch it, folks. So this, praise God, the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Imagine what that, what that is going to sound like, what this world's going to feel when it finally, when that, when this vial it's, which is already starting to trinkle out. You see the things affecting the air, the weather like you've never seen, folks. As one who's a watchman, who's been watching this for two years, I've never seen this in my life. God in his mercy. But he hasn't let it pour out completely. Oh, boy. But the, debt, but the judgment angels have been released in the land. It's like a, 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 an army getting ready to go for an attack. What do they do? They first release the soldiers out. They release them out in the field. This sniper sets up in a spot. The infantry is over here. All these things are getting set up and lined up for the attack. The judgment angels in the land released. By the hand of God to bring, thus saith the Lord, to fulfill his word and his judgments. There were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. Such as was not seen was not, I'm sorry, was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was, was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. The cities of the nations fell, but what name is mentioned here? Catch the name that's mentioned in these cities, in these countries, throughout all the earth that are connected back to one mother, one, one religion. One controlled religion that is, that is against that God is judging it and her daughters, the so-called Christian churches, amen, who put her false teaching. I just preached this in the message called Showdown. But you all don't take time to listen to the whole message because you got because you got TikTok brains. I can't even pay attention for 30 seconds. And the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance. Came in remembrance. Babylon. Babylon, the mother of harlots. Before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island, Philippines, fled 
away. And the mountains were not found. Oh, God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God speaks to me tonight. I don't know the scriptures there. This judgment's falling upon those Philippine islands, amen, because what they're connected to. Now I see why God sent this prophet to push his ministry in that country. You get, you get one final warning, and then you got a, you got a woman who's, who's, blast, who's lied to the Holy Ghost, and her whole life, her whole city, her village, everything around her, that family, everything connected will fall under judgment, amen. Thus saith the Lord, amen. And all those who protect those type of spirits and continue to hold on to the Catholicism and the false teaching and your and your cat and your so-called Church of Christ and all these different churches in the in the Philippines, Amen. Rejecting Jesus Christ, the Word, putting Him on the cross. It, the, the, the famous, the favorite word I get to hear all the time in the Philippines. Oh, uh, it's either I'm not religious or oh, oh, you're religious. I say to people all the time, no, I ain't, there, I ain't, there ain't not, there's not one religious bone in my body. I'm not religious. Where do you go to church at? I go to church every day seeking the Lord Jesus Christ with all my heart. The true Sabbath is, is being filled with the Holy Ghost because now I've, I've been resting since I was 18 years old. I've been resting in Christ, amen. I got, I got the goods. I got the ticket, amen. Seal unto the day of redemption, amen. Praise God. It ain't religion, I tell them. It's, it's a relationship. It's a personal love affair with Jesus Christ. And why is it throughout my life, for me personally, every girl I've ever talked to, any, anything through my life, life, like, what, you are so different. What is it about you that makes you so different? It's because it's Jesus Christ. It's, a, it's that intimate relationship. It's the love affair that I have with him and the passion that I have for his word, amen? Folks, this fire's been burning my bones for almost 30 years. It ain't ever going to burn out. I'll be 80 years old. I'll still be preaching this way, man. I may have no teeth in me bulb, but, but I'll still be calling it out. My, my dentures might fly out of my mouth, but I'll still have that fire burning in my bones. Amen. Hallelujah. It don't change. Amen. Hallelujah. And people have been playing. Many of you all in the Philippines, you, play, you played the part. You played the part of the harlot. It's the part you played, Philippines. But as the word says, your islands will be found no more in the mountains. Your little, you're, 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 you're a country that's full of mountains. Uh-huh. Mountains. Your mountains will be at the bottom of the ocean. That is thus saith the Lord. Amen. But the bride, the elect, those who get the Holy Ghost, these judgments are going to be released in the land. Enter into the mind of God. God is letting these things release. I commented on a man's channel today. He's a nice channel, all about the ministry of William Branham. And I can see where he's trying to push one narrative, one direction, because I spent my life around the, around the message, and I see how these, these message preachers can be. And I try to bring him back to the balance, to the middle of the road. That, he, that the mentality in the message is, Oh, we're just a bride. We just click play on the tapes. We're not. We're not going to face nothing. Amen. We're just going. We're going. In, we're that special little bride. We're going. Going. We're going in the rapture. Hell yeah, yeah. We're going to the rapture. You ever would have dreamed you would have be living right now and saw a pandemic hit the world? There, little 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 message of the hour, bride. Come on. See this year going forth. You 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 ain't seen nothing yet, folks. We're living as God is releasing the judgments. The, the, I told him today, I said, listen, the children of Israel, the children of Israel, who had a mighty prophet Moses, as they call, many of the message say, Brother Branham was that mighty Moses, okay? They had to go through all those ten plagues. They were still present as the plagues were falling, eh, huh? They were under persecution, as, as even their own prophet said, that there'll be a squeeze upon the people. So where do the people talk about that? They try to make it some easy, soft gospel. It's not. It's a bloody gospel, amen? Why would it be any different? Why would, would Abel be stuck, killed by his own brother? Why would Jesus Christ have to die on the cross and the, and, the, and the apostles get their heads chopped off? Huh? Why has there been, throughout the, all the ages, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were put in a fiery furnace, but Jesus was there to protect them? 
all through the word of God, it's been a, it's been a gospel of, 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 of persecution. But here's the parallel. John was on the Isle of Patmos who wrote the book of Revelations. You could say the parallel there is he would represent the bride. The other, the other disciples, but then, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't remember John's ending of his life, but I'm just trying to parallel something for a moment. Trying to reason with the mentality and the thinking, the way people think. That yes, the bride will escape. What, what the, yes, the fullness of the wrath of God. She will. That is the word of God as Elijah and Enoch and so, seventh from Adam. I want to stay on my point here. I want to make this, I'm going to tie this up. I'm getting off the track. But basically, this is what I told the man. I want to just say this. I said, yes, but they had to go through all that. Then they had to get their backs against the wall at a Red Sea. God don't change. Folks, we are like water. It's we are human nature will take the easiest way of resistance. Why was it pushed? It's like it's almost a symbolization, of the Red Sea. God knows us human nature, we're like water. He has to put us under pressure. So we're going to feel all these plagues falling all the way up to the point that God finally, that Red Sea is when he swallowed them up and killed them all. The tribulation period. Catch the parallel. But God delivers them by the hands of his prophet, a present tense prophet, not one that's been gone for 60 years, amen, who's preaching the word now what God is saying, amen. Praise God. God is going to deliver her, Amen. So here we are being tested. And these things are going to continue. Now, I'm preaching. I'm supposed to be asleep. <laughs> 2.48 a.m. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I keep going. I know I keep going. I, the anointing is here, but I want to, I want to stop. I want to calm myself back down. I, don't, I guarantee you I'll probably be up to 6 in the morning now. Now, what I want to do last I'm going to splice it in. I'm going to take this cloud that I took the other night. I'm going to stick it on the big screen. See if I can. I'm going, to, I'm going to see if I can figure this out where I can give you guys a better visual. And what I saw in that cloud, as I began to study into study it, was the, uh, multiple dark images. The, the rodents, the rodent connection to that very plague prophecy that the Lord gave me. Okay. And. Uh, Jezebel in Venezuela, what you try to say it was, you don't have the word of the Lord, Jezebel. You don't. Get that spirit off you. And I'm going to tell you something. There's a, there, there, was a, there was a man and woman used to go to my gym. And she's on my documentary. See, I've been dealing with things my whole life. I've been around witchcraft. I've been around women who were, who were caught in witchcraft. I say I've been around it, but I've been around those who were connected to it. And many times these women who were one-time witches and messing with that stuff, they'll begin to get, God will begin to start to call on their life, such a deal with them to some, to some level, to, some, to, to a certain degree, begins to pull on them. But because these, these witches are not, they're not under a true ministry, they're not being birthed by the word, they bring those witchcraft demons right into the church then they start prophesying, as in Acts 16, with the Apostle Paul in the city of Thyatira, which where the spirit of Jezebel resided, who called herself a prophetess. And this man and this woman, he's to my, he's connected to my gym. She finally admits to me, yeah, I was a, I was a, I was a part of witch and all that witchcraft and wicked and all that weird, all that demonic stuff. And when she said that. It's like all along I knew my soul was discerning all along something was off with the spirit of this woman. I always knew it. But I did not want to contact her spirit because I was in a working atmosphere. And all everything I've ever tried to do in my gym was just keep everybody positive, keep things uh, kind of low key. I don't want I don't want to come because I, I know how this gift of my life works. If I get start talking to you direct and we get eye contact and I start contacting your spirit, I'll start seeing things about your life. God reveals it to me and you don't even realize what's going on. I know it. I see it. But when I finally got into the, to the moment of interviewing her for my documentary and contacting her spirit, I knew then 
why I've been having issues. I've been trying to help them. He's called to, he says he's called to be a pastor, but he's connected also to the mother of harlot churches. Amen. He's selling out for, for, to preach the truth and took the mark of the beast and she's right along with it. And, they, and you know what? And, they, and they're cat owners. They love cats. Oh, that's going to hit a lot of people. Hey, my brother's got a cat. Get rid of it, brother. I'm telling you, folks. I don't, you know, you know, cat ever in my house, ever. Cats carry spirits. As I told you on this mess, on this very ministry, what was going on, there was a, on my security camera, a black cat going on. At the time, I was being at, having demonic attacks, and, there was, and I challenged the spirit that night. That there's a witch, there's something witchcraft going on because Satan's trying to come against this mighty ministry if sent from God. But when I challenge that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I tell you all the story, 33 alerts, 33 Freemasonry, Illuminati, all connected back to that deep dark world, shows up right in an hour's time on, my, on that camera that might get two alerts a day. Since I challenged it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's stopped completely, it's done, gone. Get the cats out of your house. Oh, you're crazy, Paul. Do what you want. But I'm just telling you in the name of the Lord, don't have a cat in your house. They carry spirits. Uh-huh. And, and, and you don't, and I tell you what, you know what, don't. Keep the cats in your house. Keep sucking your cigarettes. Keep getting drunk. Keep living on your idols. You're going straight to hell, and you're heading, you're heading for the tribulation period of a time that's never been seen. You've been warned by God's prophet, by God's messenger. I don't even like saying these things, but this anointing is here. And God's warning you, folks. Praise God, amen. Like a lion roaring in the jungle for the voice of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right. I'm going to I'm going to spice that in now. I'm going to show you the picture. <laughs> oh Lord. I tried to have my sense of humor earlier cuz that's just who I am. Like, "Oh Lord, what are we doing here? Here we go." He just takes over. It's his it's his ministry. I'm just a servant. I love you all. You know I do. It's speaking the truth with his love because he knows where the hour we're at. This is the hour. We're, this is the message of the hour, not just quick play on the tapes. That's why God has a living life, prophet on the scene, and in ministry, speaking the truth in line with what the prophet did say, man. All right, I'm going to share it next. Uh, if not, I'm going to talk all night. I'm going to preach till the, I'll preach the sunrise. I'll have, I'll have, I'll have preach till the morning. Praise God. Preach that devil off you in Jesus Christ's name. All right, guys, I want to start first. I want to take you back. This is a, a the picture. I'm going to go to my laptop and, mess, and do this while you guys are, while that's filming. This is on my channel, the July 14th prophecy of the play coming connected to a rodent. I was texting a brother in the Lord tonight. Um, who praise God, we're going to be baptized in here soon. And I'm humbled and grateful to be a part of that whenever he's ready. Um, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the scripture commands. So, he was asking me, you know, what I thought this, this, this plague that's coming. And I said, from my own humble opinion, and I've been asking God to reveal it to me, is in my mind, and again, this is just my, how I feel, how I view it, it'd be the bubonic plague that connects back to a rodent. Again, that's just my humble opinion. Now, this is July, I think we've been 14th or 13th around that time. This is actually my son, Isaiah, took this picture. He had no idea. He just took a picture. He was relaxing, honestly, in his hot tub. He's, he's a, the sky caught his attention. He sent it to me. And again, it's on my channel. I explained to you the whole day what was going on and what's led to this, this moment that night. And that's from the Holy Spirit, if you can see here in this, I've never done this before, so be new to me. Blow this up here. But you see right there, there's that there's a face of a rodent. There's a nose, you got an eye, you got an eye, ear, ear. As if it's looking down upon the earth, as this judgment's coming to the earth, right? So the Holy Spirit then that night spoke to me as a plague coming connected to a rodent. And then he gave me this message he preached, and then he gave me script. I said, God, I got to see it in the Word. He led me in Scripture to the idolatry and the emirates and the mice and the things like that. I forget, I think it's Samuel, the book, top of my head. It's been a little while. 
Now, this happened, I believe, October 22nd of, of this of 22. I'm driving home in the middle of the day or evening time. And I hope I think you all could, if you, if you take time, I say this to my one brother, like, oh, I don't, I don't see nothing. You know, but when you don't walk, when you don't have the Holy Ghost, when you're not walking in the Spirit, or you're not allowing yourself that God to at least speak to you, you're not going to see nothing, folks. I'm telling you, when you're smoking cigarettes, how can you expect to see anything from God? So here you got, take your time, look, see the nose? Right there's the nose. Then it breaks into the face. You got an eye, which would be another eye kind of covered up. You got the ears, see the ear there? Another ear, ear, ear there, and you got obviously the head. The face of like an angry, like an angry looking mouse is what I saw. Now, this was happened the other night. And this is going to take a few minutes for me to show you guys what's going on. The other night, this has been like January, I think, I don't know, maybe 3rd or 4th. I was driving down, down the street where I live. And man, the cloud that night just had, and the night before is when I, the, the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about the death angel coming upon the land. And obviously we talk about the judgment angels being, that are being released. And then I, I, I feel led to take this picture of the sky that night. And then later on that night I began to study it. And let me just right away with what I'm seeing. You get right here. Now let me, let me real quick give, me, give you guys a visual. If you think about a mouse again, a little pointy nose, right? His ears. Mouse, rodent, rat. They're all part of the same family. I just use that as a quick image to give you guys something to visualize. Look right here, you got a little nose, an eye, an ear, an ear. I just see that one right away. You get into, let's see here, right here, another one. Take your time, nose, eye, eye, and then how the face slant goes that little pointy face is right there again. Over here is a more of a demonic looking more like an angry looking, uh, just, it just has that, because that, that, it's death, folks, it's, it's a judgment. It's got a very demonic face to it that has sort of a mouse's, you know, the ear. You know, you're here probably sitting too far back, but you can kind of catch an ear here. You got an eye, you got an eye. The nose, almost like the mouth is opening up. Like it's almost like it's, it's speaking out its judgment coming to the land. Right up here, uh, there's another I just saw. This one right here, look, you got the little nose again. The mouth, how the body goes up, or the face, there's the eye. Now there's probably more. I think there's a few more in this. I believe there's one, I think like right here in this area, an eye, a nose. But this thing had, at least I saw right away, three or four or five rodent faces in this cloud. Okay? So again, guys, I just want to share with you how God speaks Guys, and we know that, anybody who's a child of God, God speaks through the nature. He speaks to the clouds. He speaks to us in different ways. And everything He speaks to us, a true child of God then goes to the Word and finds the Word of God as vindication. And we just shared first the first 30 minutes of what God is, has, what God is saying. Folks, you know, we're here to, to bring the warnings of God. Of what, to, to warn his people to be prepared spiritually. And the only way you can be prepared is having the Holy Ghost. That's it. Having Christ and, tr and, be, and trusting and resting in him. Okay, guys, so I'm going to get off here. It's, it's as you can see, 3.11 in the morning. And uh, God bless you all. And this is, again, my, I tell the brother in the Lord, or, you know, the, I think it was maybe today, that, like I said, hey, yesterday my day felt just normal, like normal, a normal Paul day, where I'm not really thinking. I said, this, when the Spirit of God comes on me, it just comes on me. Boom. And I've learned just to be obedient. And when He says, seek you, you go seek Him. You don't make excuses. You don't be lazy. You get out, you get whatever it is, you get your Bible, get on your knees, whatever God's telling you to do. If God tells you to do something, if God's dealing with you about getting baptized, or God's dealing with you about getting rid of a, laying a habit down in your life, whatever it is, do it now. Don't waste time. Don't put God off. 
He may not always call you again. So just remember that. Listen to God. Take, do it now. And he'll bless you. He'll bless you. And he'll continue, continue to speak, reveal, and bless your life with his blessed and mighty Holy Spirit in his presence. So God bless you all. You need to come around here and turn the camera off. And uh, hopefully Paul can get some rest. Keep me in your prayers. I, re I had to re-upload that other message. I don't want to go into detail, but I was under some... I told this brother, I said, I was probably 36 hours under attack from Satan after I, pre after I released that message. So, um, it is what it is. I, I, I just, I'm built for this. It, you know, I got the Holy Ghost at a young age, but God's been preparing me for this for 30-some years to do this work. And uh, I'm built to do this by the grace of God. So, But again, I, I appreciate your prayers. So, God bless you all. And, and as I say always, stay with the Word. Stay with the Word. Stay with the Word.